What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. In this video, I'm gonna give you my review, my thoughts, my final feelings about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Obviously, it's famous because of its S Pen, which can be fantastic for users. And I'll be honest with you, before you get too far into this video, I absolutely never, ever use the S Pen. So this review is basically gonna be from the perspective of a person that doesn't use the S Pen and everything I like and don't like about this phone. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about the design. The design is one of the first things you see about the phone, and I think they knocked it out of the park. You get this huge camera bump on the back, but when you throw a case on there, it becomes flush with the phone. As long as you have a, a, a pretty good case, you can see, can't really see it at that point. So it doesn't become an issue. If you're worried about that, you're gonna throw a case on there anyway, and if you don't, you're crazy because if you drop it, especially on cement, it's probably going to crack. At least you should be concerned it's going to crack. Um, so that doesn't bother me, the camera bump, because again, I always have a case on it. If I didn't, I would definitely feel that camera bump might get in the way just by holding it, feel a little bit awkward, but otherwise I don't really hate that. Also, the look of the cameras, I love it. I love the, the outlining of the cameras. I think it looks beautiful. It's their best design, I feel like, yet for such a large camera bump. It's a lot better than what we saw with the Galaxy S20 Ultra series. And then obviously on the front, you get amazing little display, 6.9 inch display on there. So it looks great in terms of the design. The, you know, the little punch hole at the top doesn't really bother me at all, I'll be honest with you. I've seen it for, what, last couple of years now. It was with the, I think it was with the S10. I know it was definitely with the Note 10 as well. Didn't bother me at all. I'm used to it. Doesn't get in the way. It's absolutely fine. And then you got your buttons all on the right-hand side, which is a change from last year's version. They were on the left-hand side. I'm happy they returned to the right hand side, and then you have the S Pen at the bottom left, which is on a different side. It's usually on the uh, bottom right hand side, but otherwise I never use it, and even when I do use it, I'm lefty anyway, so it's actually in a great spot. I think for someone that's a righty, it might get a little bit annoying, because you know, you're gonna be, I don't know, you have to switch hands when you grab the S Pen, but otherwise it's fantastic. The design, everything about this phone in terms of, of, of holding it in your hand, design, the way it looks, awesome. Next, let's talk about performance. No lag at all, zero. If you if you're coming from days ago, when 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 or days ago, years ago at this point, when Samsung phones did have lag after a short period of time, after a couple weeks, few weeks, a month, you don't get that anymore. That's completely completely gone. Probably don't even need to talk about it at this point. And because of the phone, they have an 865 plus processor, which is the fastest processor you can get with a phone. You get 12 gigabytes of RAM. You get really really fast internal storage. Gaming is amazing, so if you want to be a gamer on this, because you, you want to play the very highest end games on here, you definitely do it with this phone with absolutely no issues at all. If you like watching videos, if you like just uh, using the phone to do stupid stuff, just to play, you know, or write notes or whatever it may be, this is gonna do it beautifully. Probably one of the best phones in the world at that to do anything that you want. The display itself is amazing. 6.9 inches, very, very bright. It's their brightest display they've ever had on a Galaxy phone. The colors pop, you can make them natural if you want, so they're more muted, or you can make them uh, more vibrant, which is what I do, because I love my colors to pop on the screen to just look crazy, crazy good. So another fabulous, almost, I guess, perfect display at that. If, you, if you're a person that loves big displays and you're a person that wants the best display, you really can't go wrong with a Samsung phone. Another thing I wanted to mention about the display is that it does have 120 hertz and it's running at dynamic. So basically what that means is when you go into the display and you go into motion smoothness, Whenever it can, it will run at 120 hertz. Otherwise, it'll run at 60 hertz, so it doesn't use up too much battery life. But regardless, 120 hertz, 1080p plus, you can't run it at 2K plus, kind of a disappointment. But overall, I don't think you'll notice any degradation or you know, no, the, the, the way the display looks at running at 1080p plus, it still looks amazing. And if you do want to run it at 2K plus resolution, you can, but only at 60 hertz. A couple of understated things that you might not hear a lot from other reviewers or just people in general about a phone, you might not even think about it. Speakers and the microphone built into this are awesome. Speakers, 
for me anyway on this phone, uh, especially when you compare it to any other Galaxy phone, are definitely louder, more dynamic, better sounding than any other speakers built into a phone on any Samsung phone. As far as other phones has it compete, it's basically the best, if not one of the best, in terms of speakers. They're amazing. They sound really, really good. I think you'll be absolutely thrilled when you hear the sound that comes out of these speakers. The other thing, like I mentioned, when you record video and use the built-in microphone, or if you're just doing a, a, a sound record, a video, uh, audio recording, the, the built-in microphones are awesome. They sound really good. Um, definitely better than any other, again, Samsung phone I've ever used microphones, and they definitely compete with anybody else that I've heard as well. Again, if not the best, the best in the world with the microphone recordings. They just did a great job on those two things that I think are probably not even thought about a lot of the time for some people because you just are like, oh, it already sounds good. These sound awesome. All right, I'm holding both of these phones in front of my face. I'm currently looking at the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. And again, these phones are side by side in each of my hands. And now I'm gonna start looking at the Note 20 Ultra. So we'll switch the audio over to that so that you can see that. Does it sound better than the S20 Ultra? Kind of surprised at some of the things that are better or worse in terms of you know both of these phones because they're both been, have been released within the last few months of each other. But I don't know, there's definitely some differences. All right, here we go. I'm looking at the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Sorry if you can see my arms while I hold these completely straight out, but um, this will give you an indication of how good the look and sound of the S20 Ultra is versus the Note 20 Ultra. Obviously, both of these phones, especially if you get the 128 gig version of each of these phones, are very similar in price. And at that point, do you want the S Pen? Do you want a slightly different look with the, you know these phones? That's what it really, really depends on. What about the software experience? If you're used to Galaxy phones, it's really a lot of the same stuff. There are a few new things with the S Pen that you get some new you know, features, the flip and flap <laughs> all throughout the air, air actions. Again, I don't really use that. So to me, it's not a big deal. And I think it's kind of awkward anyway. You might absolutely love it. But for me, just the, the software experience that Samsung offers at this point is super customizable. The ability to change and make the phone that you want really easily is all built into the phone without having to do too much work. Also, just performance within the software in terms of like, you used to get bogged down and laggy and stuff. They just, it, it's, it's a lot of software in there, but it's not boggy, it's not laggy, it's great. I, I just, for me, it's probably, again, if not the best, one of the best, software experiences that you can get on a phone. You know, jumping from something like an iPhone over to this, you're gonna be like, wow, this is crazy. I didn't realize I could do all this without, with, a, with, a, with just the touch of a button. I don't have to jailbreak my phone. I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that. This phone has basically anything you want built into it to, to, to customize it, to do cool things. It's great. It's just, the only kind of boring part, I guess you could say about it is that it's basically the same software experience that we've gotten in the past from all their other phones. As far as battery life on this phone, it's okay. I'm not blown away by it personally. I get about five hours of screen on time with this phone and it's decent, it's good, it's something I can live with. I would have loved to see this in the six to seven, for me anyway, screen on time, because I have the, the, the screen turned on a lot. And your mileage may vary. Maybe, you're, maybe you get seven with this phone, maybe you get four. But generally, most of the people that I see are generally around that five hours of screen on time, up to six hours, but generally nothing more than that. Which again, is still very good battery life, but it definitely could be better at this point. I wish they'd throw in a bigger battery. I'll deal with the, the heaviness at it. Uh, it just, it's a little bit disappointing in the battery department for me, but overall, again, just okay. Hopefully that makes sense. What about the cameras? I love the cameras. They take great photos. Uh, they have it be on the front or the back cameras. Yeah, you're, they, you're gonna get great photos. They, they, the, the wide angle on the back is fantastic for capturing things really you know, close up, and, but get, still get that wide angle uh, or to get that GoPro type video or get that nice wide angle, but it's still pretty steady. Overall, Great, great.
camera with photos and videos. I will admit for taking pictures of people and night mode, I personally prefer uh, the Pixel 4a. I, I took this, these both on a trip and I felt like with people photos and with um, a, a night mode scene I was shooting a lot of, I preferred the Pixel 4a, but still, you're gonna get great, fantastic photos and videos with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So at that point, I can totally, without a doubt, recommend this phone. If you use the S Pen or you don't use the S Pen, it's the best Samsung phone to buy right now at the time of making this video. There's no, for me anyway, I don't think there's a better Samsung phone that you can buy. The Z Fold is out in a little bit of time, but that doesn't have expandable storage. Um, it doesn't have a cheaper price like this does versus that phone. I mean, so there's things that, if you don't need that dual display, this obviously will have better cameras also versus the Z Fold 2. If you want the best phone from Samsung, get this one. Don't get the S20 Ultra, get this. The, the, the autofocus is way better than the S20 Ultra. They fixed the autofocusing issues with the camera on here. So get the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. For me, it's, it's the best bang for your buck. It's a really expensive bang, but it's a great, fantastic phone with really no flaws at all. Thanks for watching. See you down the road. Peace.